This past week, researchers described a new fossil animal that tells us a lot about the evolution of the most numerous group today, the panarthropods, which includes things like crustaceans and insects, but also chelicerites like horseshoe crabs and spiders. And when you think about these animals, you obviously think there's a lot of these, and that might make it seem fairly obvious that we should know where they're coming from. But the thing is, especially early on, they don't have a strong fossil record. So there's been a lot of debate about how exactly they evolved into what they became. Most fossils that are actually really informative about this early time period of their evolution come from Cambrian Lagerstadt, and Lagerstadt just means it's really good for preservation. And this is things like the Burgess Shale, where you get Opabinia, but also Anomalocaris. And these are both somewhere on the lineage to arthropods, but not quite arthropods yet. But now there's a new fossil that comes from whales that helps us understand a lot more about how they may have evolved and eventually gotten there. Now the name is in Welsh, so if I butcher it, I apologize. But it's been named Myrdurin Bonnier. And it comes from the Middle Ordovician, so not the Cambrian like the Burgess Shale, but 40 million years afterwards. And it looks like it was pretty closely related to Opabinia, but also potentially to Anomalocaris. It kind of fits in between these two different animals. And that's really informative for understanding the evolution of arthropods. Like Opabinia, it shows a lot of the early signs of becoming arthropods. It has a segmented body, it has kind of lobopodin feet, which just means they're kind of little pod rounded feet, and then some sharper spikes on the tail that would have helped it swim, and importantly, a head specialization for feeding. And in Opabinia, this is the trunk. But in Anomalocaris, they also have head specializations for feeding, those being the large arms that are present. And those arms in Anomalocaris have a lot of spines, which makes this new animal really interesting because it has a trunk, much like Opabinia, but there's also some small spines on it. And that kind of begs a specific question. Is what happened in Anomalocaris the same structure just split in two? And it's a really important question for understanding the evolution of arthropods. Because when we look at arthropods, there's a couple different parts of the head that are innervated, meaning there's nerves that connect to it in different ways. Mainly there's the mandibles or the larger parts of the head. These are things like the arms in Anomalocaris. And from some of these fossils, we actually can see the nerves that are connected to different parts of the body. Arthropod brains are essentially two parts. There's a forward part and a rear part. In Opabinia, it seems like the forward part was more important for actually sending nervous signals to the trunk. Meanwhile, in modern arthropods, it seems like the rear part of the brain is the major part that's sending signals to mouth parts. So there was either some sort of shift or these things aren't the same. And that's what makes this new animal really important for understanding this evolution. This is because there's basically two options. The first is that Miradurin essentially has the same structures as Anomalocarids meaning that the trunk evolved into a spinose trunk and then split in two and became innervated, again, connected to the nerves, through the second part of the brain later on. The alternative is that those aren't the same structures and the radiodonts, like Anomalocaris, lost the trunk and then separately evolved the two large arms. This figure shows this really well, where there's the outgroup, Pam Delurion, which doesn't have any of the main traits. Then in the phylogeny, you start getting different features and characters such as a fused appendage at the front of the head, this would be the trunk in Opabinia, a rearward facing mouth, and compound eyes, and Opabinia has all of these. And then you start getting spines on the proboscis, like in Meridorin. These then potentially could have split and become the arms like in Radiodonts, and these are jointed arms in Radiodonts. And having jointed segments is really important for arthropods. Think of the legs on an ant or something, you can see where the different joints are. And considering we also have other animals like Kylinxia, which has five eyes like Opabinia, but also two arms like the Radiodonts, I think it is pretty likely that it is the same structure that just evolved to split in two. And then it eventually became more able to catch prey. It's important to keep in mind though that all of these fossils aren't steps towards progress. It's just different animals trying to adapt to their environment and some doing better and some doing worse eventually. Remember that Meridian comes from 40 million years after Opabinia. And even before Opabinia, there were pretty good fossils of arthropods like trilobites. So what this means is not that there was any single step in constant progression towards arthropods. Instead, all of these groups were evolving and changing and adapting at the same time. And under different conditions, who knows, maybe we don't have arthropods, but we have radiodonts and opabinids. Regardless though, it does provide a great look into the early evolution of some of the most common animals on Earth. 
and hopefully we'll get a few more animals like this that can help us to understand that evolution even better.